It's making me really question why I'm out here. What did I just do? Thank you, Mother! Last day for the boys. It's early, early morning here, day 12, October 11th. And we're going to skip a little bit of a normal routine today and we're going to go straight over to the fishing net since it's calling for rain. I'm starting to lose sight of the reason I'm here. I just feel like I have more to do with my life than be out here right now. It's going to be at least six weeks. I don't think I have six weeks of my life to give just to walk out. Can't help shake this feeling that I'm just wasting my time out here. It's so crazy to think. I love nature so much and I love spending time in nature and it's just the fact that I don't want to be sitting here just waiting for freeze up, just trading days of my life Really miss her. I look at this picture every single night. I'm ready to head home. We've been through so much in these past few weeks together. And I'm really happy with that. Yeah, it's my time to go. Super grateful to be out here. Very, very grateful to be out here. It's a pleasure, brother. Stay safe, okay? <laughs> yeah, buddy. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Hello folks, this is the last time uh, DJ and Maddie Clark are going to be at the old teepee together. Maddie's going to continue along the journey. It's no doubt going to be quite the struggle to be completely alone out here, especially after the last plane flies out. There's no safety net, you know, there, there really isn't. This is the real deal. This ball's to the wind right now. I worry a little bit about how skinny he's getting. And uh, if I part any advice, it's just that, just to monitor himself. Mm -hmm. He's at home here. He really is, he loves the woods. And he's got such a positive, positive attitude. You probably can't see it on this camera, but we can just barely see the outpost back there on the horizon. Maybe a couple more clicks and we'll be there. I really hope there's someone still there and we're not abandoned. Don't know. Could be. Could be. <laughs> this is it. DJ's plane just showed up. About to say goodbye for real. And, um,. Yeah, shit's gonna get pretty real here pretty quick. 
So uh, it's pretty surreal. I don't really know how to feel right now, but it's kind of a kind of a shock, I guess. But this is it. Wow! What a trip! What a trip, man! Oh my God! Oh man, I'd, I'm honestly speechless right now. I don't know what to say, it's all kind of happening fast. Eh? But yeah, you'll do well, man. You'll do well. Keep safe, have fun. Have a blast, buddy. See you, brother. Love you, man. Thank you, buddy. Be safe, okay? Anyway. All right, Maddie boy. That's it. This is it. What a feeling this is. I'll stay here and watch DJ take off and wave to him once more. I don't know if I should dance for joy or start crying. It's a real uh, trippy feeling right now. I'm really alone. Oh my God. <laughs> what the f***? What did I just do? What did I just do? I'm sure gonna have some tears tonight. Maybe hard to tell through the camera. Those are bear tracks. Small bear too. Small bear worries me because a small bear is an experience and silly and stupid. Woohoo! That wasn't so bad actually. The wind is so cold that the water felt a little bit warmer. You gotta look on the bright side, baby. Everything is safe and sound. Oh, that makes me happy. Nothing's touched, all the fish are still here, the tent is safe. Thank you, mother! Thank you, Lord. It's time to get settled back in and get my head straight and start this trip for real. Now that DJ is gone, I got all this space to myself for activities. I need to reorganize and get everything ship shape in here. Also, I need to cut some new sticks. I'm gonna put some sticks on this side of the wood stove, some sticks on this side of the wood stove, and run some wires across so I can start drawing the fish in here. Solid. Got some snare wire here. You can see the roll is almost empty, which then the roll will be repurposed as a fishing reel for ice fishing. Ooh, a really good reel. You can do a million and one things with a good roll of snare wire. Very level at top one, that's for sure.
for those who don't know, DJ makes these himself. Just like that. How cute is that? So light. Now the old axe, or you could say the old bush saber, is a very double-edged sword. On one side, in my mind, it's the most useful tool you could ever have in the bush. On the other hand, this is by far the most dangerous tool out here. This thing is razor sharp, remember, and it's a heavy head. So again, one miss swing with this thing, and it'll turn into a real survival situation really, really quick. You want a good solid splitting block. A lot of people will cut a tree down and cut a nice big block, roll it to where they want. I much rather cut a tree down, a fresh green tree, right where I want my stump, and actually leave the roots in the ground. It'll never move, it's so solid right now. When you're using the saw to junk these off into lengths like this, you always want to try and make it nice and level. If your cuts aren't level, it doesn't want to stay on the block. This is everything. You always protect your head. You never just drop it in the moss or in the bushes because it's very easy to lose. If you're not using it, you stick it in a stump, you stick it in a tree, something so it's up off the ground so you don't lose it. Ah, welcome everybody, welcome. This is MTV Cribs. Come on in and check it out. I got her all reorganized now with DJ gone. This here is what let's say I guess the magic happens. Sleeping bag, the layer mattress. Back behind it, that's the full mobile command office right there. All the battery banks, the Pelican cases, all the cameras, everything, arms reach, so every night I could be working on the batteries, or charging, downloading uh, media cards, the hard drives, and the computer, all that good stuff. Over here, we got our new handy dandy fish rack, which we're just going to get going here, Chicken Lou. Behind it, that's the bank. In the bush like this, split dry wood, stored in. It's just as good as money in the bank. I'm wood rich right now, firewood rich. If there's one commodity out here that you need in Labrador, anywhere in Canada in the winter and the fall, it's firewood. And right now I'm pretty stacked. I always sleep a little better knowing that my good trusty bush saber is arm's reach. So with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the fish barrel in here and start hanging up fish. Ooh, tight seal. Hello, beautiful. Ooh. I'm not just woods rich, I am fish rich. The second best thing. Still got a little moisture to it, so that's why I'm gonna hang it up here this evening and start drying it. Now in most cases, like if you're normally camping or normal anything, this is a major no-no. I'm basically tying a bow around my neck for a bear. But that's just how you gotta do it. When you're living like this, you gotta take that risk. Mm. Boy, I am one rich man right now. Look at that stack of fish. 
all that firewood behind it. Ooh, Nelly. Tell you right now, man, if that don't bring the bears in, I don't know what will. So since this just went from a teepee or a tent into a full food cache, I'll keep one broadhead ready at all times. This guy here has the fish defender. You see he's already got some hair on us. She already took something down. The only bear defense I actually got is this little thing here. A cute little shooter. And six bear bangers. This little thing is basically just for insurance. Just to make me feel a little bit better. After all that hard work, I think I deserve my fish head soup tonight. Cheek. This is actually a very enjoyable meal. Best part is, what I don't eat tonight, I eat for breakfast. Really taking a liking to it. I'm gonna have to figure out how to continue this when I get back in the real world. That wet, cold, it's a wet, foggy, windy day out there. It looks like it's gonna rain any second. Plan is to move all the stuff, all this fish back to the smoker, get the smoker going again, and then um, start cutting logs. That's all my food in the whole world right now. All the wood I'm going to be using for this fire is this real dead stuff with ideally no bark. If you start it burning just any old tree you can with bark or spruce or fir that's really lively with lots of bark and, and uh, stuff like that on it, it gives off a different kind of smoke. And one is going to ruin the taste of fish. It gives off a bunch of toxins and stuff apparently. So the only wood I'll burn is this. Now it is time to begin the most calorie intensive part of this entire trip. Cutting the logs for the cabin. Most of the trees got S curves the whole way up through them. So I'm really gonna have to cherry pick and go around and try and find the straightest trees. Twist it and curvy. Curvy and twist it. Twist it and curvy. Another one here. Oh, this one doesn't look bad. Oh, never mind. Twist it and curvy. So I basically just gotta work with what I got. But it's only one way to do it, just like everything out here, just one little bite at a time. Let's get started. Timber. Fourteen logs. Fourteen logs in the first day. That's good. A lot of work, I tell you.
nightly journal. Running on empty like this, it's amazing how just taking a bit of fish soup, just a broth and a little bit of meat, just feel the energy just just flow back in you like a breeze of wind. Amazing. Mentally I'm feeling phenomenal. Going around all day singing out loud, singing in my head, thanking the Lord, thanking the woods. I'm very excited to wake up tomorrow morning, do it all over again. And slowly watch that thermometer dip down and dip down. Watch the ice start forming. The last of the needles falling off the tamarack trees. The bear's going to sleep. That's it for me. My journal is done. I'm going to call it a night and go get some sleep.